Hello team, how's it going? Welcome to Combat Ready HQ and welcome to today's video where we're looking at Finland's impact on NATO. Finland joined NATO last year. NATO is a North Atlantic Treaty Organization and it was put together uh, basically at the end of World War II in 1949. Um, so basically World War II, something like that would never happen again. Uh, a load of basically countries um, coming together uh, to prevent another another mass sort of world war. Um, does it work? Looking like it does. We've not had another world war, but obviously it does push other sort of nations um, buttons, as we've seen with Russia. Um, they really got sort of triggered when Finland and Sweden were looking at joining NATO, and now they have. Uh, but basically, simple terms, loads of nations come together, uh, to sort of maintain peace around the world. Um, so yeah, Finland joined last year. So we're going to look at this video. It's actually by NATO. Um, so go and check out the original video in the description as always. Uh, and then yeah, hopefully you enjoy. Check out um, our website, our free Discord and our Instagram. You can get our coffee, get some combat ready coffee over at our website. Um, but yeah, let's get into it and comment as always. The main feature of the Finnish people and the Finnish army forces, you could describe it by saying Sisu, which is mental resilience and readiness to cope with harsh conditions and still you are able to continue. We say that Ketju on yhtä vahva kuin sen heikoin lenkki. And that means that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. So we want to make sure that our chain is very durable. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine not only changed the security landscape in Europe, it also acted as a catalyst for Finland's accession to NATO, membership which was confirmed in April 2023. We decided to join because we saw that the membership would increase our security to this new environment that is foreseen. That's the very basic, simple reason. But from a military and geographic standpoint, what does NATO membership mean for the country itself? And what does Finland bring to the NATO alliance? We share the same neighbors and the Ukrainians. It means that also we can provide some experience and expertise about how the Russians they are behaving in, in our neighborhood. We have a 1,300 kilometers long eastern border with Russia. That so is long border. We have to always keep keep in mind. Even as a member of NATO, Finland is responsible for defending its own country. I really like that. So yeah, they have a really long border. They've joined NATO for the security, um, as many members do. Like I said, it's to provide peace around the world and prevent sort of World War happening too. Again, World War Two happening again. If anything's kick off, these members would come together and it provides security for each other. But the fact they've got thirteen hundred kilometer. Um, border is a very long border to maintain and patrol. At least they say, look, we're not relying on NATO. We've still got to defend ourselves. Finland's membership of NATO effectively doubled the size of the border between NATO allies and Russia. And that border requires monitoring at all times. <laughs> Minä olen koiraohjaajana toimin täällä, täällä ja tuota, koira ilmassa ja jos on tullut raja yli henkilöitä, niin koira ottaa sen jälleen ylös. Well equipped and with military training, the Finnish border guard operates under the Ministry of Interior. However, if a crisis was to occur here, they could be integrated into the Finnish defence forces and could therefore be the first line of defence. Oh, nice. No, kyllä minun mielestä on tosi tärkeää, että se on valvottu on. And while there is no immediate threat on the border, this proximity to Russia is what prompted Finland to abandon their neutral status and join the alliance. But membership in this region works both ways. If you think about our location in high north region, 
and uh, also the Baltic Sea region, both uh, areas with significant strategic value, and we are one of the stakeholders in this area, so it is important. Finland has a population of just 5.5 million. Not many at all. The wartime strength of its armed forces is a substantial 280,000. The reason for that is its comprehensive conscription service. This is what makes me think, should the UK have conscription? Such a small population size and to a number of trained troops. They haven't got to do long, but they have the skills necessary to defend if need be. Conscription is the core of our system. It's a glue which combines the whole Finnish nation. Everybody has been living in tent with other Finnish guys. Everybody has been taking part in these exercises, having field rations, getting cold, getting wet and fighting together. Love that. the Finnish constitution, every citizen is obligated to take part in national defence. All men between 18 and 60 must complete military service and women can participate on a voluntary basis. Inte on aina ollut mun haave, siis mä oon pienestä asti aina haaveillut, että jotenkin kun iso vanhemmat tai niin paappa varsinkin kertonut tarinoita sen omista kokemuksista Suomen niin kuin armeijassa, niin se oli semmonen fiilis, että vitsi, että mäkin haluan lähteä ja jotenkin muutenkin semmonen niin maanpuolustustahto, well, no. että kyllä mä niin kuin we have seen the increasing number in willingness uh, to defend the country after the war started in Ukraine. Too right, it brings the, the nation together. Were high already before, but now all the people, men and women, are more willing to do something for his or her country. Finland also Ooh. has one of the largest artillery capabilities in Europe. No way. With an arsenal of approximately 1,500 weapons. That's decent, that. <laughs> you think they could line it up along their border, um, very well spaced out, and you could defend your border with a good amount of artillery pieces like that, um, very tactically set them back slightly, um, if anyone did start to invade your border. System of, uh, Look at all that. Joint fires, but the main essence of our defence system and the extra value for NATO is our capabilities to fight a long-lasting warfare in deep, deep forest areas. Kind of kitted as well. Joining to NATO increases the safety and security in, in Europe and especially in the Baltic Sea. Is this their special forces? With Finland's location as one of the nations bordering the Baltic Sea, and with the Gulf of Finland an important hub for trade and transport, Finland's navy needs to perform a variety of roles. The navy main task include surveillance of our territorial waters and repelling maritime attack and uh, territorial violations, if any. And of course the Navy is taking care of the, our vital sea line of communications and protecting those. As well as these primary functions, the Finnish Navy performs multiple tasks related to the protection and defence of the surrounding waters. This mine countermeasures ship is responsible for detecting, identifying and neutralising underwater explosive threats like sea mines. Previous wars have proven that the Baltic Sea and Gulf of Finland is very easily mineable. We're talking about shallow waters, rocky bottoms, very hard sound profile. Conditions are very hard for mine hunting. And that's what we're good at. And that, that is something that we, we can bring to the to your right. allies. As well as protecting the Finnish coastline from the sea, it is also protected from the air. And the backbone of the Finnish Air Force is its fleet of 62 FA-18 Hornet jet fighters. It's a decent amount as well, 62. Not bad. We need to be ready 24-7 for the identification missions, mainly at the Gulf of Finland and, and Baltic Sea. So that's how we do it. That includes air surveillance, uh, which means the recognized air picture which the Finnish Air Force is providing for the, all the services in, in the Finnish Defence Forces. The Finnish Air Force has long trained and operated alongside international partners, but since Finland's accession into NATO, that cooperation has been stepped up as they integrate into Allied Air Defence Strategy. It's about doing the same thing on the same way to be effective together 
And that is important that we can really work together closely, sharing the tactics and the knowledge. Behind that is the wartime capability for air operations. And with the FA-18 set to be replaced with 64 powerful Oof. F-35 fighter aircraft, starting in 2026, okay, Allied air defences in the region will become even stronger and more integrated than they already are. So, F-18s are already a great aircraft, but the F-35 is definitely up there as one of the best in the world currently. So to get 64 of them in 2026, alongside the amount of artillery pieces and the fighting force they have because of conscription and the experience they have in the Baltic Sea. Yes, the Navy might be a bit smaller, but the experience they have, they are bringing a lot to the party. Finland's defence forces are woven into the fabric of its society. <coughs> it's all about geography. I think... Finland are bringing a lot to the party, not just the fact that they are able to get a fighting force of 280,000 because of their conscription. <clears throat> they have the basic skills, which if it war did kick off, you'd be able to improve on um, and they would be able to fight. Yes, they've got a long board and they've got a good amount of artillery pieces. It would have been good to see what armour they have, um, but they've got the manpower to hopefully at least do as much as they can on that border with the support of NATO as well. F-35s coming in 2026 is big, like I said, definitely top three, I would say, or one of the top aircraft fighter jets in the world currently. Um, and the fact, if you just saw then they were training in the snow, so obviously that sort of area, very cold conditions, can get dropped below freezing, and it's something that they live in and they train in and they're good at. So yes, the British Army can train in all environments, all situations, but people like Finland, Swindland, Norway, are just cold weather sort of proof um, and, and they do it day in day out so that's also something that they bring to the party as well is their skills and knowledge in that type of environment um, and then obviously living in the Baltic Sea where they border obviously they need because we could have gone into the Baltic Sea if something kicked off but now Finland are actually there they know the waters they train in it they surveillance it every day um, and it's on their borders so they can come out of their own ports and harbours. So that is that is massive. And I think what Finland and now Sweden are bringing is really strengthening NATO. And to be honest, what Russia have done wanting to bring back the Soviet Union, all they've done in the war with Ukraine is make sh people want to join NATO and do the opposite. He, want, he didn't want them to join NATO. He wanted them to stay independent. But the war in Ukraine has pushed them and it's done the opposite to what Putin has actually wanted. Um, but let us know what your thoughts are on that in the comments below and I'll see you soon.